What are you doing, all right? We're all here, right? We're all a little chilly out there today, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Spring's right around the corner. That's right. Yeah. A couple more, couple more weeks of this. And... I like the seasons, you know? You know, you know that spring is coming. You know, you know, I, I love the seasons. That's why I like the winter, you know? There's always something to look forward to. Yes. You know? I like the fall. Oh, the yeah. winter, eh, eh. <laughs> I don't mind the winter, the snow, eh. <laughs> well, hey, we can deal with it, right? That's right. All right. So we know we're studying the book of Proverbs. We know we always, we've been reading 1 Corinthians 13 when we start. And we know it's all about love. And God loved the world so much that he gave us his son, the Lord Jesus. Thank God we're in this dispensation in our walk with the Lord. Um, I don't know if anybody's reading the daily walk, but I, I want us to go to Exodus chapter 19. I want to share something with you that I read there. It talks about the commandments in Exodus. And everybody thinks like the commandments are like, oh, how could anybody follow the commandments? Uh, you know, the commandments are... Like all of us, the commandments are not to hurt us. The commandments are to help us. The commandments were, God gave us them the commandments to help them on their journey. The problem is we can't keep them. Right. So just go to Exodus and just hold on a second. I want, I, in the daily walk, it made a statement here, and I want to read it because it's really important because a lot of us get tripped up with this. It says, which of these statements are true? As best describes the Christian life. The Christian life is a bunch of do's and don'ts. The Christian life is a bunch, is, 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 life is liberty to do as I please. Neither one is true. To be sure, in Christ there is freedom from slavery. We understand that, right? He set us free from the slavery of sin. Right? Right. <laughs> to sin and release from the guilt of past failures. Do you realize that the blood of Jesus Christ covers our guilty past and our shameful past? Mm -hmm. We should never feel guilt in things that happened in our past. The blood of Jesus covered that too. Thank God he did. Because a lot of people go back and look, ah, oh, they can't get out of their past. The past has been forgiven. Thank God. And the present and the future. But liberty does not mean license to live as you please. See, this is what people trip up in the Christian life. They think liberty is, I can do whatever I want to do. I have the liberty to do it. The Israelites were free from Egyptian slavery, but they were not free to follow their every desire. Are you with me so far? Yeah. All right, now we're focusing on God's word, right? We're here now, right? That coffee table don't exist. Till this is over, amen? If you have to get up and go to the bathroom, that's fine. But as far as the, the, that, done. God's book is open. He's in charge. The Holy Spirit takes over this room. We are in church right now, amen? amen. amen. We should respect that, respect God, yep. respect the preacher, and respect the Word of God, amen? amen. No distractions, no unnecessary noise that's going to break the flow of God's Word, amen? amen. Thank you. All right, now we're all on the same page with that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. God wanted them to live as his chosen people, just like he wants us to live as his chosen people. Jesus didn't come. He said, I didn't come to take away the law. I came to fulfill the law. In Christ, we can actually follow and live out those commandments in our lives. That's what it means. We can actually do it. We never had the power to do it. Now we have the power to follow them through Jesus Christ. That's what it means. They weren't meant, oh, take away the commandments and live a free-for-all life. It's all set. Jesus died. It's all set now. No, that's not what it meant. Mm -hmm. Look what it says. Just listen to me now. God wanted them to live as chosen people, so he gave them rules for their daily conduct. Not to spoil their fun, but for their protection and profit. You get it? God gives us these, his word as what? A protection and for our benefit. Because we are like sheep, the Bible says. We're prone to what? Wander. Make our own desires get in the way of God. 
And we start doing things our own way. And we end up destroying our lives. <clears throat> what we do is we end up blaming everybody else for our destroyed life instead of looking in the mirror and say, I made the choice to do it. Nobody else made me do it. It's not the world. It's not the people. It's me. I have the sinful nature inside of me, and it's bent towards doing the wrong thing. <clears throat> Look at quiet. See, when the Holy Spirit takes over, it cuts right through the chase. Mm -hmm. It cuts right through all the phoniness of church and coming to church and sitting down like all goody two-shoes knowing that we need help. Mm -hmm. And that's why God gave us these rules. Now look what it says. To set them apart from the rest of the world as his own people. Not to spoil their fun. Look, we're supposed to live separated lives. Uh, the world is supposed to get less and less into our minds. And God's word is supposed to get more and more into our hearts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Imagine what a ball game or any kind of sport would be like without rules. Imagine if you go watch a game and there's no rules, no penalties, no nothing. It's just no time limit, anything goes. Imagine what kind of game that would be. Now listen, no boundaries, no clock, no referees, no time limit, probably no fun. Rules are essential for the enjoyment of life. Correct? Mm -hmm. They are. We need rules. Yep. As you read through the list of commandments today, try to think of at least one way each command would make your life happier and safer. Is there one you need to work on today? It says. The tablets at Sinai were given to show the need for the cross at Calvary. Well, we're going to read what the commandments were, and we're going to see why we needed a Savior. All right. Does anybody... Could, it's on, look at verse... We're going to start in chapter 20 of Exodus, and we're going to start in verse 1. And we're going to read... <coughs> Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. Now, how could I put that into words today? God rescued you from the world and the slavery to your sin, whatever you were. That's what he rescued you from. Do you think that that changed? No, the human heart has not changed. He rescued us from the world and the slavery to the things of the world. So we don't have to no longer follow the desires of our sinful nature, yet we can follow the Spirit. Now, they didn't have that. All they had was these commandments laid in stone. We have the Spirit living in us that gives us that little... Eh, eh, eh. You ever play that game Operation when you were a kid? <laughs> you go out to the thing and if you miss it... <laughs> Well, that's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. When we miss the mark, the Holy Spirit gives us that eh. And that's a good thing. It's not a condemnation. It's, it's love pointing us back in the right direction. But that's not a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Look, your sinful nature is taking over. You're going to hurt yourself. I'm trying to warn you. If you don't want to do it for yourself, Jesus says, you do it for me. And you do it for others. <coughs> Jesus said, if you want to come after me, take up your cross daily and deny yourself. So are you really going after Jesus? Are you taking up your cross daily? Or are you using the crutches of the world instead of the cross? All right, now look what it says. You must not have any other God but me. Now back in the Old Testament, they were worshiping all kinds of gods. Baal and Molech and all kinds of sorcerers and and sex goddesses and all kinds of crazy things out there. Mm -hmm. So what would be your God today? You think God has changed? He says, you must not have any other God but me. What's the God in your life today that dictates over you? What other gods do you have in your life? Could it be a habit, an addiction that you depend on more than God? Don't think that that's not God doesn't, God says, oh, that's okay. No, that's another God. That's idolatry. Don't think that that ever went away. It never did. Thank God the blood of the cross feet. But the consequences from your idolatry have not went away. You will have a consequence. God forgives you. Heaven's your home. But you'll have a consequence to your idolatry. It'll hurt you. 
And it'll hurt others. It's selfishness. Now look what it says. You must not. See how he says you? He's talking to everybody. You. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. Mm -hmm. Now, did that go away? No, God's still a jealous God. That never changed. He loves you, but he doesn't want anything in front of him. He wants to be first and foremost in your life. Joy, Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. How, how's the world? Me, it's all about me first, mm -hmm. others, and then Jesus last. Yep. If that. If that. Yep. I don't know why Christians can't get that. There's still a bunch of wrapped up in that just bait. That's just immaturity and not a lack of understanding why God delivered you and saved you. He didn't save you so you could have the best life now. Right. He saved you so you could do something with your life for Him. You what you were created for. People get it wrong. Look what it says. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. What does that mean? People think that that's like a her hereditary thing. No. Your sins carry down through the generations. Your habits and behaviors carry down to your children, and they carry down their your sins and behaviors to their children. That's what it means. The only way to break that is to break the power of sin and repent and change so future generations don't act the same way. You know, you're, you're just like your mother. <laughs> you're just like your father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what's your father like? There's the thing. He came to Jesus, but what's your father like? Is he a changed man? Does he love the Lord now? Is he serving God? Does he put God first in his life? Does he want his family to come to God? Or does he want his, is he the same guy he was before he came to God? You see, there's a change. There's a transformation to take place. If that doesn't happen, the kids don't follow. Because they don't see anything different. That's just the way it goes. That's, that's what the Bible's talking about, the generations from this. I'm saying to myself, well, I'm glad I stopped doing what I was doing so they don't do it. If I was down at the barn in the pool hall right now, that's where they would be. But no, I'm in Bible study. Amen. Teaching God's Word. And look, that's where they are. Amen. They decided, they make a decision to put God first in their life too, over time. They keep seeing me being faithful, then they become faithful. Don't think that the kids don't watch. Don't think the family ain't watching. And don't think people ain't watching. Amen? Amen. This is what God, that's because God loves us. He doesn't want everybody else to suffer from what we do. Now look what it says. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. What does it mean? Well, when you're living the right way, good things start to happen in your life. The curses of the generation start to break and good things and things start to turn around. Amen. But it takes what? Repentance and obedience. Now look what it says. Look at verse 7. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Now, people misrepresent God all the time. Don't think that he forgets about that. He doesn't forget about misrepresentation of God. If you want to represent God right, you have to know his word and be his representative like the Bible tells us that we are. If you're not, it, doesn't, it says, I will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. What does that mean? Is, heaven, is he going to take me out of heaven? No. But you're going to suffer down here for the consequences of your actions. That's what it talks about. He doesn't just give us a pass. A get out of hell free card. No, you get out of hell from going when you go to heaven. You don't get out of hell when you live a dirty life down here. It don't happen. Right. Two different things. Mm -hmm. There's a, it, when you follow the rules, you enjoy heaven life now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you break them, there's a consequence. When you break the rules in a game or you do a penalty, what happens? 
there's a, something happens, there's a penalty, right? Football is 10, 15 yards, depending on how severe the penalty is. Basketball, the same way. The same thing with God. He's like, there's a penalty. Look, people don't think, we don't get away with things still. The consequences, we're not ignorant anymore. We have to understand that because God loves us. Now look what it says. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Yeah. You have six days each week for ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For, it is, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That's why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as whole. Now everybody's saying, no, we don't have to obey the Sabbath anymore. No, no kidding. No, you don't have to obey it. God gave that day a rest for you. I need a day off. And I don't have to look. You know what happens now? In the world, you take a day off. It's like you feel like um, you're unproductive. <coughs> You should be doing something. But no, the day of rest is a blessing. Amen. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you take that day off in the honor of the Lord, He's going to bless you. You have to look, think with the right mind. Do you have to? No, He does it for us. Why, who doesn't need a day of rest, really? Mm -hmm. How many of us are, go, 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 work seven days a week? When I was younger, this country shut everything down on Sunday. Remember? You couldn't even get gas. Okay. Anything. Everything was closed on Sunday because it was a day of rest for the family yep. and to worship God. Everybody used to go to church, come home, get together, have a nice meal together. <clears throat> everything was closed and that changed, right? Yep. The government got their hands and everything, started opening things up. So don't think that we're not getting further and further away from God because if you look back, we definitely are. Yep. Church was a must in my house at one time. Yep. And I'm glad it was, because it set the stage for me to follow through with it later on in my life. I drifted away, but I had that foundation. Yeah. Amen. Amen? I'm thanking my parents for that. Amen. And God, that they gave me that foundation. Amen. They did the best they could with what they had. Yeah. And Sunday was a day, and I, even though they had to drag me, I still had, I still went to church until I was old enough to, you know, be a little rebel and not go anymore. I'll fix me. I won't go to church no more. What a mess I made in my life because of it. Instead of staying on the right path, right? I was like, how? that's the devil. That's the sin nature. How can a kid hate church? Right. Think about it. The only way you could hate church is because your evil spirit inside you is telling you to hate God. I didn't even know I had a sin nature because nobody ever taught me that. God's not happy with you. He's going to point his finger at you. Oh my goodness, everywhere I went. Like I said, I'm going to catch that church on fire if I get in that confessional. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, see, like the commandments are good though, aren't they? Look, isn't it like a, if, uh, as a Christian, you could actually say, look, Sunday's my day. That's it. That's my day of rest. I don't have to answer the phone. I don't have to answer to anybody. Of course, if something happens, you have to take it. But I mean, you have to do it. Like Jesus said, if, you're, if, you're, if your horse fell in the ditch on the Sabbath, when you did get him out of the ditch, he was telling the Pharisees. Yeah. Yeah. No, even if somebody's bleeding to death, just leave him there. <laughs> yeah. no, that's not what it meant. Oh, yeah. People take it to the extreme. Don't, don't, you can't heal on the Sabbath. He told Jesus, you can't heal anybody. It's the Sabbath. You can't, you can't grab that corn. You can't get anything to eat today. It's the Sabbath. That's what the law does. We know within reason that I don't have to go to work today. I don't have to do anything that's out of the ordinary. I can relax and enjoy God today. It was a day of rest to worship God. How many of us need a day of rest to worship God and put Him first in our lives? Really, how much time do we really spend with God? Think about it. Before we say, I'm bored. What are we going to do today? Why don't you look up and say, Thank you, Lord. Why don't you teach me something today? To be content with nothing. No, we got like, I got a clicker. It's got like, 
1,400 channels on it. <laughs> I can't even, it, it'll take me a half hour to go through them all. That's all a distraction, mm -hmm. is really what it is. Boredom is a distraction from the devil. Say, yeah, mm -hmm. See, you're not content with the Lord. Look, go do something. You got everything here. Go, go for a ride. Do something. Mm -hmm. Don't just sit with me. That's what the day, that's what the Sabbath was for. And I think that's a good thing. It's a good thing to stop and think about what God did for you. Amen. And how he delivered you instead of just thinking about yourself and I'm bored. What can I do? You see how the commandments are good? The problem is we can't keep them. Sit with yourself for more than 10, 15 minutes and see what else starts coming into your head. Honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God has given you. He's going to bring them into the promised land. Right? Honor your father and mother. You know what used to happen back then, right? When children were disobedient. Thank God you're in the New Testament times, kids. <laughs> because they used to, if they were disobedient to their parents, you know what happened to them? They got stoned to death. God wanted to purge the evil out of the people. That's what he was trying to do. But it never changed their heart. Now look what it says. You must not murder. What is murder? Jesus said, if you look with some, if you hate somebody, that's murder. Can't keep it. You must not commit adultery. What's adultery? Putting anything in front of God and worshiping that. Now everybody thinks that's just second, but that that's part of it. Adultery. You know, just, Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you committed adultery. Can't keep it. Because it says, fail in one point, you're guilty of them all. Now you understand why we need Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. We can't keep the Sabbath. We can't just sit still and rest. We can't keep our sick mind thinking lustful thoughts. Right? You must not steal. Oh, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> I never stole a thing in my life. <laughs> All of us, right? Or oh, the justification is, oh, there's tons of them. <laughs> there's a million of them, they won't miss them. I didn't steal anything. Oh. <laughs> Can't keep it. But I'll tell you what. As I'm growing in the Lord, I get convicted now. I can't even take a pen or a napkin out of somebody's car. Before, whatever I needed. <laughs> they won't miss it. There's a hundred people here. How are they going to say it was me? <laughs> but I never stole a thing. I'm not like the guy that robs banks. I'm just a petty thief. Oh, God sees everything. Yes. From you stealing a, a mint out of somebody's car yep. to robbing the bank. You might as well rob the bank. You might as well get the money out of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yes. 